best I can to keep a voice going today. You know, the kids were mentioning all the things they got for Christmas, and you heard a lot of it's technology, right? There was a lot of technology flow in there. And technology is a really neat thing. It amazes me how much technology has, has changed, even in my lifetime, how much, how much has come about in a in relatively short amount of time. Look at the last 100 years, how technology has advanced. It's astounding. I think one of the things that we actually probably take the most for granted it's not our cell phones or our computers or Kindles or any of that. I think it's a simple thing called electricity, particularly the light. Most of us can't remember a time without lights, without electric lights. There may be a couple of you that once upon a time had words that didn't have the lights in the house, but most of us don't know that. Most of us can't relate to a time without lights. I can relate to a time without air conditioning, but not a time without electric lights. So I don't think we fully appreciate the power of light. But there's another more important light that many of us take for granted, and that's the light of Jesus Christ. The coming of that light changed the world in many more ways than these lights changed the world. But sometimes it's hard for us to appreciate his impact upon the world because we have, just like we have no recollection of a time before lights, we don't have a recollection of a time before Jesus. So today I want us to consider the importance of Jesus as the light of the world. Now first, light brings us sight and understanding. If you look in the dictionary, the first definition that you find for light is this, something that makes vision possible. Now without light, we are helplessly blind. Did you know that, in the, that the absence of light can even cause blindness? Animals that live their lives in the dark are commonly blind. And horses that are kept in dark stables and never allow light will go blind. Even humans that, that live in cellars or dark places all their lives eventually will go blind. Before Jesus, most of the world was blind because it had rejected God. As the Apostle John says, God is light. And if you push God out of your life, you will become blind. Mankind was, was spiritually blind and therefore spiritually lost. But Jesus came as a light to help a blind world regain its sight. In John 12, 46, he says this, I have come as light into the world that everyone who believes in me may not remain in darkness. Through Jesus, then, we know and understand that we are created by a God who loves us and a God who wants to have a relationship with us. We know and understand that our sin and our rebellion has severed our relationship with God. We know and understand that we can regain that relationship through Christ Jesus. Thanks to Jesus, we can indeed say, I once was blind, but now I see. The next blessing of light is that light brings life. Now we learn in grade school, right, that, that without sunshine, there would be no life on earth. The sun is the source of energy for all plants and animals. Sunlight sustains our lives, not only due to the energy that it gives us in our food, but also because it helps our bodies to synthesize vitamins. It brings vitality to our red and our white blood cells. Shut up the strongest man in a dark dungeon and he will become pale as a corpse, losing physical vigor and strength, losing the power to resist disease, and he will eventually waste away. But as vital as sunlight is for physical light, life, the light of the Son of God is even more vital to our spiritual life. The coming of Jesus fulfilled the prophecy that was given in Isaiah 9, 2. The people who were sitting in darkness saw a great light. And to those who were sitting in the land and the shadow of death upon them, a light dawned. Jesus then, as light of the world, brings us the light that quickens or restores our spiritual life. In John 8, 12, we read again, Therefore Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light of life. Spiritual life 
can be found in no other than Jesus Christ. And just as he's the giver of physical life then, he is the provider of spiritual life. Spiritual life, the eternal life, is possible in Christ when we consider the next blessing of light. Light removes stains and it purifies. Sunlight will remove stains from a spotted garment. When the girls were babies, I used cough diapers. And we didn't have a dryer, so I would wash everything and hang the di diapers up to dry on the line outside. And they were the whitest, prettiest cloth that you'd never imagine. They were diapers. They were so white and so beautiful. But when we got a dryer, no matter how much bleach I used, I could not get those diapers as white as they would get hanging in the sunlight where they could be sun bleached. Well, not only does sunlight remove stains, but it purifies. In 1877, it was discovered that sunlight kills bacteria. Before our modern germ killers, my Germex over here, the only way to purify something that you couldn't boil was to put it out in the sunlight. The ultraviolet rays of the sun purify surfaces of bacteria and germs. Sunlight destroys germs in our environment before they can enter our body. And sunlight also aids in destroying germs within the body. After exposure to sunlight, the ability of cells to eat and destroy an invading foreign substance is greatly increased. Just as the sun, the sunlight, removes physical stains, so too Jesus, the light of the world, removes the spiritual stain of sin from our souls. Isaiah 1.18 reads, Thus says the Lord, Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. So just as sunlight purifies, Jesus purifies us also. How wonderful is the cleansing we receive when we accept Jesus into our lives and when we obey his gospel. Another benefit of, of light is that it heals. There's healing in sunlight. When Kaya was born, she had jaundice. You know what the doctor told me to do? Put her in the sunlight for a few hours every day. That was the only treatment that she received, and it worked. Sunlight therapy has been found to be highly effective in the treatment of tuberculosis, streptococcal infections, pneumonia, mumps, fungal infections, and more. Tiny flashes of infrared light can play a role in healing wounds or building muscle, turning back the worst effects of diabetes and repairing blind eyes. Natural light may heal our physical wounds and afflictions, but it is the light of Jesus' love and compassion that brings healing to our emotional wounds and afflictions of the heart and mind. In the very first sermon that Jesus ever gave, which is recorded in Luke 4, he declared that the prophecy of Isaiah 61.1 spoke of his ministry. This is what he said. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Many have been wounded over words or deeds of others in this cruel world. Many may feel eject, rejected and dejected. Many have been broken by adversity, affliction, and loss. Many of us carry great burdens as a result of some past bad decisions. But for all these things and more, Jesus is the great healer. Jesus beckons us in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And not only does light heal, it also cheers. And when there are long periods without sunshine, people tend to get depressed. People who live in Oregon or Western Oregon or Washington State and parts of Southern England where there's lots of foggy, cloudy conditions all the time actually have a higher, increase, a higher incidence of depression. People who live in parts of the world where the days are short, very, very short, or it's, it's dark, even 24 hours a day, they suffer from a condition. It even has a name. Do you know what it's called? Seasonal Affective Disorder. SAD. That's what they call it. And people, this SAD, people with SAD are treated actually by going into rooms that they call sunrooms. And they receive light treatment in order to help 
offset the, the effects of not having any light. Bright light actually does cheer us. But there's a good reason why people have trouble finding happiness, true and lasting happiness. Happiness depends on what happens. When things are going great, we're happy, right? When things are going great, yeah. It's easy to be happy then. But when things take a turn for the worse, what happens? Our happiness just dissipates. It evaporates. What we really are looking for, though, is a happiness that lasts. And such a thing does exist. It's not called happiness, though. The Bible calls it joy. Joy is deeper and more abiding than happiness. Joy is something that comes from our Lord. Listen to how D.L. Moody describes it. Happiness is caused by things that happen around me, and circumstances will mar it. But joy flows right on through trouble. Joy flows on in the dark. Joy flows in the night as well as in the day. The Lord gives his people perpetual joy when they walk in obedience to him. Joy comes from the knowledge that you are right with the Lord. It comes from knowing that he is your loving and loyal friend. It comes from knowledge in your life each day that your life each day has a purpose. It comes from knowing that you are pleasing your creator. It comes from the light of Christ working through you to bless others around you. It comes from fellowshipping with him and bathing in his light every day. It's another blessing for light. It gives us security, right? There's security in light. Anybody afraid of the dark? It's okay to say. I was afraid of the dark as a kid. A lot of kids are afraid of the dark. I can remember being afraid. It was not so long ago. You know, Stephen King, the best-selling author of all kinds of horror novels, once talked about his daily writing routine. And when he was asked whether he ever wrote at night, he said, are you kidding? Not with the stuff I write. Well, apparently, even Stephen King knows the power of darkness. But light dispels fear. It provides us with security. That's why we light our houses and our streets at night. There's security there. But when you have Jesus, the true light in your life, you do not need to fear anything. He offers the best protection. He provides true security, and nothing can penetrate the wall of defense that he puts around his own. In Romans 8, 38 and 39, we read, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Last thing light brings us, hope. Now, for good reason, light has been a symbol of hope for ages. Think of the, the sense of hope that we feel when dawn's first light appears after a really long night. Jesus is the embodiment of hope. He's the hope of salvation, the hope of righteousness, the hope of peace. But the greatest hope he gives is that which, pro, which pertains to the afterlife. For many, death is a very dark and foreboding thing. Death is dreaded rather than something to be viewed with hope and anticipation. Jesus can change that. He is the only one who can grant us a cheerful light when we are in the valley of the shadow of death. For if you belong to him, death is but an illusion. In John 11, 25, 26, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall, shall live even if he dies, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. And then Jesus asked this. This is part of the scripture. Do you believe this? While on maneuvers, a battleship lookout noted a light in the dark. It was a dark, foggy night. And after noting the light's coordinates, the captain ordered the, uh, the messenger to send out um, a message saying, I'm on a collision course with this ship. You need to change course. So the captain said this. He said, signal the ship. We're on a collision course. I advise you to change course 20 degrees. The signal countered. Advisable for you to change course 20 degrees. 
Now the captain signaled, I am a captain, change course 20 degrees. The response was, I am a seaman second class, you'd better change course 20 degrees. Now by this time, the captain's getting furious. And he signals out curtly, I'm a battleship, change course 20 degrees. The reply came back, I am a lighthouse, you make the call. In John 8, 12, Jesus spoke, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light. Are you walking in the light today, or are you still in darkness? Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your only Savior? Have you repented and chosen to dedicate the remainder of your life to serving him and pleasing him? Have you verbally confessed your belief that Jesus is the living Son of God? Have you been baptized into that grace of God which washes away your sins? If not, maybe it's time to change course and know the full benefits of the light of the world. You make the call in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.